Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School and I wanted to continue our series Wisdom of the Wall Tent today and talk a little bit about furnishings of the wall tent and maybe areas within a fixed camp because you have sub areas outside the wall tent within a fixed camp. You have areas for doing woodworking, you have areas for preparing food and then you have other areas that may be hygiene areas where you take care of your morning ritual of washing and shaving and things like that. So we'll talk about those areas as well, but for now, let's talk about the difference between a fixed camp or a stationary camp and a moving nomadic traveling camp. If you have a fixed camp, you almost have to look at that as if it is a home, just like your house, because you're staying there for an indetermined amount of time until you decide to leave for the most part. You are carrying this stuff in by conveyance, whether that be an ATV, a truck, a trailer, horses, sleds, canoes, whatever the case is, you have a conveyance way of carrying this larger amount of equipment, just as if you were moving the contents of your home from one location to another, because this now becomes your home. And I think that's something that people miss a lot when you talk about different types of encampments and you show somebody something like this wall tent and they're like, oh yeah, I have a good time carrying all that into the woods. You're only going to carry it once for this camp location in a conveyance and you're going to set it up once. And then you're going to take contents from your home base just like you do at your home now if you're going out on a hunting trip, a fishing trip, a scout, a couple days away from your base camp. You're going to collect things from your home to put into a smaller pack that you can carry on your back or a smaller system that you don't have to have conveyance necessarily to carry or a lesser form of conveyance maybe and you're going to take that away from the base camp and then return just like you return to your home. So when we look at this type of camp we're looking at a more permanent or fixed camp as Horace Kepar would call it. Okay so let's speak to some of the furnishings that you may have in a more fixed camp or a wall tent type situation that we're in now. Obviously we're going to want some type of a bed a good night's sleep is the most important thing that you could possibly have in a long-term scenario where you're going to spend a long period of time in a woodland environment or a wilderness environment. The better you sleep, the better you're going to function every day. So we have just a white canvas and wood cot, very, very traditional for any time period between probably the Civil War all the way up into the 1940s, 1950s. This style cot would have been very traditionally used. And it just folds up so that it can be conveyed away or brought in. But once it's unfolded, it's very much like a traditional bed. I've got a couple layers of a wool blanket shroud on here and just a piece of like rag carpet on top of it to battle convection from underneath so that I stay warm at night. And then I've got a couple wool blankets over here that I use to sleep with. And Horace Kepar said that two thinner wool blankets is always better than one heavy wool blanket. Probably the reason for that is being able to layer those things and trap that dead airspace for warmth. But 100% wool and no compromise is really what you want if you're going to go to that extent with your camping and you're going to go with only blankets and not sleeping bags, you want 100% wool without a doubt. Now, the other thing to remember is that all of the items within this wall tent are these are our items that we would have in our home. So this is what we're going to take from to pick and choose if we're going to go out for a couple days away from camp. So the same wool blankets that we're using here, possibly the same ground pad that we're using here, we may roll into a bedroll to take with us when we go out on an overnight hunt or scout. So that's important to understand. Now, I've got a wood stove in here. I do have some carpeting in here on the floor. That's easy to roll up, easy with conveyance, but it makes it more comfortable because you're not worrying about the wet, damp ground or the bumps or the sticks and things like that. They can always be taken out, hung over a line, and beat the dust out of and brought right back in. So they're fairly easy to take care of as long as you have your camp set up on a proper location. You're on high ground, lots of drainage. It's not going to get wet in here, and the tent's not going to leak. I've got a stove over here in the corner with the pipes and a shelf that can be put into this tent in cold weather. When it's not cold, it can serve as a stand for another equipment box that can be turned on the side, which is very typically done, 
to be used for shelving within the camp. So in this box, I've got just a few accoutrements on top for hygiene that can be carried outside to a hygiene station or used early in the morning here within the wall tent. And then I've just got a couple things that I readily get to every day. My candle that I use at night in here, an extra candle, an extra folding candle lantern that I may take with me when I go somewhere because I have one set up inside the tent as well. My fire box that is my large fire box that contains lots of things that we'll go over in a future video, but matches, flint and steel set up, uh, lots of tender materials for lighting the stove, fat wood, spunks, all those types of things are inside that box to be utilized within this tent. But again, some of those items may be taken out of there to be put into a kit to take out away from camp. And then I've got a picture in here, just a morale booster, a picture of my wife. That would have been very typical of a camp like that. And then I've got another box here turned on its side. Again, another equipment box. This one happens to be for the cookware and the cook setup. And it holds the Dutch oven and things like that that I carried in with me. But now it is just a shelf for different types of supplies and my eating and cooking utensils. So they're on that box. We have the carpeting. I have one folding chair right here. That works out really well. And then up here, I have a shelf I'm going to show you. So up in the top up here, we have just a wooden shelf that's on rope. And this wooden shelf is for nothing more than holding firearms. And I've got 122 and one single shot 12 gauge on that shelf. But it keeps them up, out of the way. They're in a waxed canvas sleeve so that nothing's going to happen to them and they're well protected and I can put them up in that shelf and not worry about them until I need them for a hunt so that's a good up and out of the way place to keep those firearms nice and safe okay so this crate here is basically the camp box or the camp toolbox and it contains Everything it would take to set up and repair and maintain the camp other than cookware as well as anything that you would need to use to repair existing pieces of equipment or fabricate new things from the landscape. That's the importance of this box. So it's your construction set basically for anything that you want to build, make, or repair. You should have something to be able to do that in this box. And we'll talk about the contents of this box in another video because that's really a video all by itself is just the contents of the camp toolbox. So that really kind of covers everything that's inside the wall tent. Now there are things outside the wall tent that have either been manufactured or they have come from these box and crates that were carried in but they're set up or stationed in different areas of the fixed camp. So let's talk about those real quick. First thing I've got set up over here is I've got another camp set up and this is basically the guest bedroom if that's the way you want to look at it. This is some place where you could laze around during the day if you wanted to when it was too hot inside the wall tent. I've got a hammock set up here. I've got an 8x8 tarp set up here. That's pretty much all this is and this would be part of the accoutrements you would pack up if you're going out away from your base camp. There's your hammock, there's your tarp, throw them in your Trapper Nelson or your backpack of choice, off you go. Okay, the cook area is very simple. We have a tripod made from wood with a tripod chain holding it on. We have a trammel chain attached to that that we can raise and lower our Dutch oven over the fire as needed. We have a number 10 Dutch oven. Along with that Dutch oven we have a steel skillet. 8 inch, a coffee pot, and a set of fire irons. And all of this stuff can be packed into the one box for your cook gear. Now, the only other thing that I have here is this stand, and it fits into the same box. And what it's used for, it can be used for anything really that you want to cook on. You could put a pan on there if you wanted to, you could put a coffee pot on there if you wanted to. But what it's really designed for is for taking your Dutch oven lid and flipping it upside down over the coals to use as a griddle surface for cooking on. But it can also be used for cooling the Dutch oven when you pull it off the fire as well. Without setting, if you didn't have legs on there, you want to set it on the ground, you could set it on top of this as well, and it's made to be like a trivet. 
So it's a very multifunctional piece of kit that doesn't really take up a whole lot of room in the camp box, but it can be moved anywhere you want it and used for lots and lots of different things. Okay, this is a real simple scout style setup for hygiene. You've got a mirror on the tree. You've got a pan that's connected to a tripod that you can fill with water to wash off in. Drop it to the side when it's not in use. You have a hook in here with a towel for your face or for a washcloth. And then you would bring your hygiene kit out here that you have in the tent that has your soap, your toothbrush, your comb, your razor and those type of accoutrements you would bring out here with you when you come. And this will just be set up waiting for you when you get here. Okay, the last thing that we have out here is a woodworking station, sometimes called a pig, sometimes called a clave, sometimes called a bull worker's vice. It can be used for lots of things, and it's got different types of hold-down areas and slots in it where you can put wood to work on it, basically. It's like your workbench in the woods that's made from woodland materials. We have a mallet for splitting. We have a larger, what's called a commander, for driving wedges and then we have different types of wedges and pins that we can put in here to hold our material in different ways but this is basically our workbench of the woods okay guys well i appreciate you joining me today for this quick video part two in our series wisdom of the wall tent and today i just wanted to kind of walk you through do a little pathfinder cribs if you will and show you what the fixed camp may look like or may have looked like, the different things and areas within that fixed camp, and what the main accoutrements would have been in that camp to smooth it for the long term. And we'll talk a little bit more individually about some of these different boxes and their contents and the uses of some of these items as we go. But I wanted to introduce you to the fixed camp overall first, so that when we're in different areas, you'll already have the layout and understand exactly where we're at and what we're doing. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you guys joining me for this video today. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I look forward to another video in the Wisdom of the Wall Tent series as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.